This is DC practice assessment number two, part C, and we're covering T12 and T13 from the National Training Package. And it's Dr. Ken here with you. So how does the assessment work? Step one, uh, play the video. We'll pose a problem. Uh, you pause the video and have a go. Then if you continue on with the video, we're gonna give you a, a hint of some kind to help you along the way. Step three, we're gonna give you the answer and uh, an explanation that goes with the answer. And then step four, you can turn the video onto the next question. So let's move on. I'll just uh, get my screen pointer set up. There we go. So our first question is, the internal resistance of an ammeter is A, about, a thousand ohms, B, very high, or C, very low. So pause here. So the hint is, think about how an ammeter is connected in a circuit, and think about what it has to be like to not interact too much in that circuit. So thinking about ammeters. Here's the answer. The answer is the internal resistance of an ammeter needs to be very, very low because we don't want to interfere with the current in the circuit. So it has to pose very, very little resistance itself. So very low is the answer. Question two. Which measurement instrument is best suited for measuring current in an active submain? So a submain that's alive, it's active. Which measurement instrument is best? A, a mega. B, a clamp meter. C, a series test lamps. Or D, a Whitstone bridge. So pause here. Here's the hint. Think about uh, the logistics of taking the measurement. We're measuring current, so think about the logistics of how you would measure current in active submain. The answer is a clamp meter. A clamp meter can be slipped around a cable while it's live. You don't have to break into the circuit to use a clamp meter. A mega or a HV tester would be inappropriate. Series lamp tests are not going to help you measure current. And a Wheatstone bridge measures very low values of resistance. So that's not going to be the one either. So you should have been able to, if you didn't know the exact answer, eliminate the ones until you came down to clamp meter. Next, the circuit below shows the connection arrangements for four different meter arrangements. Which meter reads the total current? So you can see meter A, meter B, meter C, or meter D. Which one? of the meters reads total current. So pause. Hint, current always measured using what type of connection? So we're measuring current. So think about how an ammeter is fitted into a circuit. So the answer is B. And we'll point out why it's B. Can't be A because that's in parallel and obviously measuring voltage. It can't be C. Again, in parallel. Therefore, it's measuring voltage. So we're left with B. It's in series, which is what we want. And D is in series. So both of these are ammeters. But which one's measuring total current? So here's the current flow through here and then it branches off and goes down through here so the only one measuring total current is this one here B so the answer is meter B question 4 with reference to the diagram below what is the volt of meter reading if it has an internal resistance of 20 K ohms when the voltage across the resistor R2 with the meter removed. So we want to know what the voltage across R2 is with the meter removed. 
as well. So pause, it'll take a few calcs to get here. So hint, the meter is in parallel, needs to be, and you need to account for this. So here's the process. I'll go through it with you. So step one, we want to get the parallel between the meter and R2. So we're told the meter's 20k, we know that R2 is 2.4k, that tells us that it's 2.143k is the parallel of those two items. Next we work out the R total. So we know we've got 1.2k and we can add that to 2.14. So we're adding the two resistances together and it tells us that we have 3.343k. We can now work out the I total. So I equals V on R. So there's our 100 volts on our R total giving us 30 milliamps. So we now know that there is 30 milliamps in the circuit while the voltmeter is connected. So step four, the voltage across R2 is going to be the 30 milliamps multiplied by the parallel of the two. Remember we worked out the parallel up here. So of 2.143, so this is 2.1k is the parallel, giving us a reading of 64.3 volts with the meter in circuit. So that answered the first question, that's the meter reading with the meter in circuit. So we now take the meter out of circuit and again rework the R total the R total is now 3.6 because we don't have the parallel of the meter. We have a new I total. So the I total has gone up a little bit. Sorry, gone down a little bit, I should say, to 28 milliamps because we've got rid of a bit of a parallel network. So we've got a new I total. It's no longer 30 because we've got rid of the meter. And we've got a new 28 milliamps. And we just apply that again across our R2, our 28 times 2.4, and it now reads 67.27. So you can see there nearly a uh, 3 odd volt difference caused by the loading of the voltmeter. Question 5. Why are the cores of a cable tested for continuity after, an, after they've been installed, after installation? So why are the cores of a cable tested for continuity after installation? A. To verify that the conductors have not been damaged. B. To check that the cable insulation is not damaged. C. To make sure the cables are correctly connected to the equipment. Or D. To make sure the cable is protected against mechanical damage. So pause here, have a think about what the answer would be. Here's your hint. Read the question carefully and think about what continuity is and what it is not. So there's a strong hint. What does continuity tell us and what does it not tell us? So here's the answer. It's to verify that the conductors have not been damaged. Uh, B, to check that the cable insulation is not damaged. Well, continuity is not going to tell you about physical damage. Uh, C, to make sure the cables are correctly connected to the equipment. Well, at this point, we just don't know where they go, so it's not going to tell us about the equipment. And to make sure the cable is protected against mechanical damage. Again, we're just not going to know with continuity whether mechanical damage has occurred to the cable or not. Question six, what is the best way to measure resistance of a 0.01 ohm resistor? 
they've got a resistor at 0.01 ohms what's the best way to do that a long shunt volt ammeter method short shunt volt ammeter method c use omega on the ohm scale or d use an ohmmeter Here's your hint. What effect does having a meter in a low resistance circuit have? So we're talking about something smashing very low resistance. The answer is the short shunt voltmeter method. So because it's such a very, very small amount of resistance, the short shunt is the best way to go. So the internal resistance of the mult voltmeter is very high compared to 0.01 ohm so it will have very little effect so because the resistor here just turn the pen on because this resistor is 0 0.01 ohms and even if our voltmeter is at 10k they're often more than that but 10k in parallel with 1 ohm is going to make absolutely no difference to the measurement really at all. So by using the short shunt method, we're going to be able to take the voltmeter reading, the current reading, and work out the resistance from those two things. So the best method would be the short shunt, not the long shunt. Question 7. When undertaking an insulation test, of a 230 volt AC installation, the tester should be set to. So when undertaking an insulation, so we're testing the insulation of a 240 volt AC installation, the tester should be set to A, 1000 volts DC, B, 250 volts AC, 1500 volts AC, or 500 volts DC. So pause here, have a think about it. Here's your hint. What is the approximate peak value of 230 volts AC? Do you have any idea? Because 230 volts AC is talking about RMS. So what would be the peak value of 230? So the answer is to set the mega to 500 volts DC. 230 volts peak is almost 300 volts so you'd want to be measuring well above 300 volts the next best is DC at 500 volts question 8 what is the purpose of testing insulation resistance of a cable after installation so I've installed the cable and now we're going to test its insulation resistance so a to check the cable is mechanically protected. B, to ensure the cable is correctly connected to the equipment. C, to ensure the cable insulation is not damaged. And D, to verify that the conductors are not damaged. So pause and think about the question. Hint. Again, read the question carefully and think about what is insulation and how do we test it so the correct answer is to ensure that the cable insulation is not damaged to check that the uh, a was to check the cable is mechanically protected well it doesn't continuity won't tell you and insulation testing won't tell you mechanical damage can only be detected by physically having a look to ensure the cable is correctly connected to the equipment well, we don't have any equipment or how it's connected, so that can't be right. And finally, D was to verify the conductors are not damaged. Uh, this will not tell us whether the conductors are damaged or not. So, has to be C, ensure that the cable insulation itself is not damaged. Question 9. AS3000 specifies that insulation resistance between active and earthed parts of an installation must have what? At least 0.5 of an ohm resistance, not less than one mega ohm resistance, more than 0.5 of an ohm resistance, 
must be less than one mega ohm resistance. So A, B or C, so pause and have a think. So here we have what is being tested and why. So think about what is being tested and why. So we're testing insulation resistance. So how good the insulation itself must be. AS3000 says it must not be less than one mega ohm. So it must have a very, very high value of resistance and it must be over one meg ohm. 10, question 10, in order to do an insulation test on a main supply. A, the supply should be energized to improve accuracy. B, the insulation tester should be set to ohms. C, the ohm meter should be set to 500 volts DC and D, the supply must be isolated for safety. Pause here while you think about the answer. Hint, what is the test type and how is it done safely? What is the test type and how is it done safely? So the answer is the supply must be isolated for safety. The supply should be, A was the supply should be uh, energized to improve accuracy. You should never do any testing live. So no. The insulation tester should be set to ohms. No, we're not measuring ohms when we're doing small ohms. We're measuring mega ohms and we're measuring voltage breakdown with an insulation tester. So no, not the ohms. The ohm meter should be the ohm meter should be set to 500 volts. Well, you don't set ohm meters to any voltage. You set them to ohms ranges. So the question C or answer C was ambiguous anyway. So D is the only possible answer. The supply must be isolated for safety. Question 11. With reference to the diagram below, what is the true value of the resistance if the voltmeter has an internal resistance of 60K? So what is the true value? value of the resistance. Here's your hint. Looks like I've given you the hint and the answer all in the one go. So the hint is find all the currents first. So what we've done here is we've taken the current through the voltmeter and that's going to be 22.3 divided by 60. That's going to tell us that we've got uh, 3.72 milliamps flowing in the multimeter or in the voltmeter itself. Then we can simply take the current in the ammeter and subtract the current in the voltmeter. So we know that we must have 19.62 milliamps flowing in the resistor. So we know we've got this much here and the current, Kirchhoff's current law tells us that most of the current will go down there and a little bit of the current will go up here. And we've worked out that three, sorry, 0.372 has gone up there. The remainder must be going through the resistor, which is 19.628 milliamps. So pretty easy to find out the resistance because we know resistance is volts on amps. So 22.3 volts divided by our 19.62. We know our resistor has to be 1,136 ohms. So that brings us to the end of uh, DC practice assessment number two, part C. Hope you've gained some great understanding, particularly in the application of meters there.